shamans don't see with these ordinary eyes. What happens with shamans is they go into an altered state of consciousness. I just really want to say this because what I'm finding as a teacher of shamanism of 35 years now is sometimes we forget that actually the gift of shamanism was given to us by the spirits. The gifts were not given to us by other human teachers. And so it's important to uh, be able to acknowledge where this comes from and the importance of this practice and the seriousness of this practice. Yes, there's an incredible amount of joy of being able to travel into to the beauty of the unseen realms, which I'll be talking about um, in this lecture, but it really is for our survival. And here we are on the planet today, and we're looking for tools to thrive and survive. And we have them. They've been passed down by tens of thousands of years of ancestors who were willing to keep passing down the teachings, no matter how many times they were imprisoned or, or what happened to them or how their drums were taken away from them by religious and political communities. And so I'd like to just do an opening invocation. And I would like for you to drop into your heart and to tap into, uh, just think about the long line of shamanism and the gift that the compassionate spirits have given to us and that we want to honor them and we want to honor the ancestors before we open our hearts to learn more of what I would like to share with you during this session. great spirits. Thank you, compassionate ones. As humans, we greet you and we give thanks for the wealth of tools that you are filling our inner well of spirit with so that once again, we can remember the gift of life and why we're here and how we can contribute in service to help all in need today, including ourselves. We greet and thank the spirit that we call air, earth, fire, and water. These elements give us all that we need so that we can live on this beautiful planet Earth. We give thanks to the ancestors, to the compassionate spirits. They show up in so many forms and we greet them all. We give thanks for having this opportunity to be part of a global community at this time on the planet where we have so much opportunity to create and we have so much opportunity to create positive changes as our fabric of reality is dissolving. Yes, it is. And we're all feeling it. But through the power of shamanism and through the power of ceremony and through the power of working with the, the helping spirits, that's where we learn and that's where we start to reweave that incredible fabric of reality that holds all of us in love and in light. 
And so I have um, some topics that are really passionate to me personally that I would like to speak to you today. And I just have them written down. And so um, uh, I'm putting on my sacred reading glasses for just a moment to look at the first topic I have promised to talk about. And so one of the things I think that people don't always understand is uh, in our culture today, we focus so much on shamanism uh, being a series of methods and we have to learn so many different methods to heal and we have to read so many books um, to be able to heal and learn how to use shamanism. And uh, one of the things that I think is important to remember for those of you who might be stepping into this path for the first time, because I think that many of you are first new to shamanism and there are those of you who have been practicing for very long now, is shamans don't see with these ordinary eyes. What happens with shamans is they go into an altered state of consciousness and in that altered state of consciousness there's an invisible uh, third eye uh, part of them that gazes beyond the veils of this physical world here the ordinary world that we live in they gaze through that veil and open it and then they fully through drumming and rattling and singing and dancing they step through that veil where they not only enter into amazing unseen realms that are filled with just uh, such beauty, the same kind of beauty that we see here on this great planet Earth. Um, but what they see is they see energetic patterns. They're looking at energetic patterns in the unseen realms that we're bringing into our bodies and into the world. And so what happens for shamans and cultures um, is that they're not, they're not looking at rational diagnoses. And that's oftentimes where we find ourselves focusing on is what is the diagnosis that makes sense to the client and makes sense to the shaman. But what the shaman is doing is the shaman is not focusing on, I have four methods to work with and I'm going into the unseen realms, traveling into the unseen realms to meet up with compassionate spirits who will help me guide me into which of these four methods will be used. No, the shamans gaze, they open up the veils between the invisible uh, realms and our ordinary world and everything is in patterns of energy everything is being shown in patterns of energy and so what they're looking for is where is the disharmonious energies that are, are happening and what do they need to perform through ceremony which i'll be talking about a bit later to be able to harmonize the energy that web um that web of light that's going through your system that's that's uh flowing through you all the time your spiritual energies that are flowing through you all the time but what's coming in to block that and so shamans do the best they possibly can to find words to verbalize the energetic patterns that they're seeing that shows disharmony. 
And so um, the point that I'm making is that there aren't the rigid methods that we're seeking for healing. Um, because when we stick to a rigid method of healing, we put the client in the box we put ourselves as a shaman in the box and we put the helping spirits in the box because we're not opening up to the wisdom of the universe that wants to come through. It's almost like we say to the helping spirits, we can only comprehend these certain methods of healing. Which one should I do? Where in the world of shamanism, the doors open up and, and there's so much um, that the compassion passionate spirits are sharing of how to heal those disharmonious energetic patterns that are bringing illness to the person and the planet. And that leads me to the topic that I'm starting to talk about is part of the disharmony that we're seeing when we look into those unseen realities of what's happening on planet Earth today is it's about uh, compartmentalizing healing and methods of healing and where we've forgotten how to live and that's what brings harmony back into our lives it's not the healing methods it's how do we live <laughs> 